Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Action RPG lessons. In lesson number 8, we'll add an object that will create more bats for us to fight. In video games, an object that creates other objects is called a spawner. We use spawners to create a consistent and repeating challenge to the player. Spawners can work in many ways, but the simplest ones work with just a timer. When the timer reaches a certain amount, it spawns a new object and resets the timer. We'll be making one of those. First, let's create a class and find a sprite for our spawner. I'm going to name the class Bat Spawner. And the Bat Spawner is going to use the Cave Sprite. You can find that in the Asset Store. I'm just going to name the cave, Cave. Inside the bat spawner, I'm going to set its sprite. So we say self.sprite equals sprite, and then cave.png inside. Let's add the bat spawner to our forest room. I'm going to place the bat spawner in the top right of the room. I'll give it the name bat cave, and it equals a bat spawner class. If you want an object's name to be two words, you need to squish them together. We can't have any spaces in our names for objects and variables. You can make it easier to read by using camel case. Using a capital letter at the beginning of each word makes it easier for us to read, and the computer doesn't care whether it's capital or not. Since I'm setting the sprite inside the bat spawner, all I have to do now is position it. So it's going to have an x of 400, and it's going to have a y of 200. If you want to go to the forest room right away and test it, Head to your game script, and instead of going to the field at the start of the game, we can go straight to the forest. Perfect. Now once again, the spawner is quite small, so I'm going to increase the size of it. We can do that inside the spawner's loop. Perfect. So now we've got our bat cave. Let's have it spawn some bats. In the bat spawner start, we'll want to add three variables for now. First, let's add the spawn timer. We need to have self dot in front of it. And that spawn timer is going to equal zero. We'll count it up in the loop in order to spawn more objects. Next, let's add a little functionality for the spawner to change the bat's direction and speed. So we're going to say bat direction, and let's say they start as left, and we'll say self.bat speed, and set that equal to 2. This will let us customize each bat spawner to behave a little bit differently. If we want certain bat spawners to make them go to the right, we can change that. Let's get our spawner spawning. Inside the loop, we'll count up that spawn timer. And then we'll check if it reaches the number 100. So we're going to check if the spawn timer is greater or equal to 100. Once it reaches that number, we're going to create a new bat. I'm just going to call this new bat, like that, and it's going to equal a bat class. And we want to make sure the new bat shows up where the spawner is, otherwise it wouldn't make too much sense. So we're going to say new bat.x equals self.x, and new bat.y equals self.y, 
And next, we want to use these two variables we set up, the direction and the speed. Whenever we create a new bat, we're going to match up those variables with the bat's direction and speed. So the bat gets that information passed to it. So we're setting the bat's direction to equal the spawner's direction. Right now, since the bat direction variable is left, all our new bats are going to move to the left. And we can do the same thing with the speed. So the new bat speed is going to be equal to our bat speed. And since the bat speed is equal to 2, all the bats are going to be moving at a speed of 2. All right, now that our new bat is all set up, we need to remember to reset that timer. If you forget to, what'll happen is you'll create a new bat every frame. And that'll lag your game until it crashes because you'll be creating 60 new bats per second. We only want to spawn a new bat every 100 frames, which is between one and two seconds. In order to reset the timer, all we have to do is set it equal to zero again. That way it can start counting up back to 100. And this will repeat infinitely. As soon as a new bat is created, the spawn timer resets, counts up, creates a new bat, resets, and so on and so forth. Let's see how it works. Aha! So, we are spawning some bats, but they don't have a sprite on them. Let's fix that. Since all the bats are going to look the same, we can set their sprite inside the bat's start. Instead of setting it in the room or game, we can say self.sprite equals sprite bat.png. That way, whenever we create a new bat, it's going to set its own sprite, and we don't have to think about it anymore. There we go. Looking much better. If we had our sword, we could defeat these new bats and get more gems. If we want to change the direction our spawned bats move in, instead of changing it inside the bat spawner itself, what we'll do is change it whenever we create the bat spawner object. In our forest room, our bat cave is just using the standard left direction. If we want to change it, we can just modify that bat direction variable and say it equals down instead. And that will pass on that information to every bat it creates. How about making the bats spawn in random directions or random speeds? Well, we can modify that in the bot spawner. <coughs> well, we can modify that inside our bat spawner. Let's add a couple more variables. They're both going to be booleans. We can say self dot random direction or random dir equals false. And we can say self dot random speed also equals false. So if we want the spawner to use a random direction or a random speed, we can set those to true. However, we need to actually use this information in the loop. In order to use our random stuff in the loop, we'll have to import random at the top. Next, let's add a few lines inside our spawner logic. First, let's check if we want a random direction. So if self.randomdir is equal to true, we're going to pick a random number. I'm just going to call this one dir num for direction number. And it's going to equal random.randint. And I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 4, one for each direction we can move. And if that dir num is equal to 1, we'll set the bat direction 
equal to up. And we want to use that same logic for all the other numbers. If dirnum is equal to 2, we'll set the bat direction equal to down. The next few lines are going to be almost the same. We're going to be changing the direction to either left or right. All right, so if we want to test this out, let's head to the forest and set that random dir boolean to true. Let's see what happens. There's a bat going down, there's a bat going left, another one going left another one going down. It's choosing a different direction each time. That's exactly what our code is meant to do. Every time the spawn timer reaches 100, we're picking a different number from this random range. And depending on what that number is, we choose a different direction. And then we set the bat's direction based off of that random direction. Let's also check the random speed. If we choose a random speed, this one will be a bit easier. We can just set the speed to a random number. It'll be done all in one line. The only thing left is to decide what speeds to pick from. I'm going to pick a speed between 1 and 3. If we want to test that out, head back to the forest and also set the bat cave's random speed to true. So you'll get some bats moving at regular speed and some moving faster or slower. Looks great. The next lesson is going to be a challenge lesson using the things we've learned today. I'll see you there.